Hi folks, welcome to this episode of Hit the Mahogany. Mmm, nice colour. No, the white balance isn't off. Well, it might be, but not the, not for this just now. Got a nice bit of purple here. Why? We are doing that because we have some Chambour liqueur here. And it's got lots of dark red fruits in it. So, a little bit of purple in there. So, yeah, thought we'd go for that. What we're going to be doing on this episode is a French martini. Now, yeah, I got purple on. Let's talk about some of the ingredients here. A lot of you will probably look at this bottle and you'll be like, that looks like Chambour liqueur, but uh, the bottle seems very different. This has actually got the top in this, so there's a plastic cap on that. It came off, it was glued on top there. But this is actually metal. You don't get that nowadays. The background to this one actually just, uh, I used to shovel the snow for neighbours across the street there. And they were cleaning out their basement. And they had all these old bottles of spirits and wines. And knew that I partook in a few uh, drinks now and then. So they actually gave us this bottle of a uh, Chambord liqueur. I have no idea how old this is. We just I just opened it uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and it wasn't until I opened it I realised that uh, this had the metal on and everything and it's still got the little label. So uh, maybe I shouldn't have opened it. Maybe I could have kept it and sold it at uh, Christie's auction or something like that. Anyway, still tastes fine itself. Chambord liqueur from uh, Loire Valley, Loire region in France, uh, made with uh, raspberries, blackberries, and uh, is it black currants as well? Yeah, it is black currants. Black currants aren't big here in the US; they're a little bit more popular uh, back in the, the UK and Europe. And what they do is they steep this in spirits for quite a while, a couple of times, four times, four weeks, six weeks, uh, and then at the end, after they've finished steeping it. They blend it all together, mix in uh, XO cognac, which is cognac that has, uh, if you've seen one of the episodes where I cover some of the ages of the cognacs, I'm trying to think what it was that I would have done that in. Was it the sidecar? Maybe the sidecar. Uh, if, it, if it was, there's the sidecar up there, you can go and check that one out. Great one, easy one to do as well. Uh, but they mix it with that XO cognac, aged for a minimum of six years. And then they also mix in other things like uh, Madagascan vanilla. Uh, uh, some other spices in there, like cinnamon, clove, uh, what else am I missing? Cinnamon, clove, ginger, that goes in there as well. So there's a few different things that go into this. So this is the flavour here. This is it, I should say, a little shot. Again, taste these things before you mix them. Mm. I always forget, particularly with something like this, because a lot of times you only get these in cocktails. And then when you taste them by yourselves, you realise they're actually pretty damn good by themselves. And this one is, it is just packed. You get that berry burst coming through. That was nice there. Not quite alliteration, pretty close to it though. But a little bit of a berry burst coming through there. It's not strong. It's only about 16.5% ABV. Uh, definitely the vanilla. Not really sure if there's a cognac in there, but there's certainly like a... A dark, dark spirit that base that's based uh, the, uh, a dark spirit that is the base flavour of the alcohol that you're getting coming through there as well. Hmm. Very sweet. Not something you could drink too much of by itself. It's absolutely delicious though. So that's our Chambour liqueur that we are going to use. Uh, we also have uh, some uh, vodka here, which goes into this. This is uh, this is Polish vodka. Uh, a lot of vodkas are made with rice, you know, things that are uh, things that are actually neutral grain spirits themselves are technically really a kind of a vodka. And a lot of these things, you know, if you've got uh, a spirit like uh, maybe a liqueur like limoncello, and that's based on a, a neutral grain spirit, and that could be some type of vodka. But here. This is not grain. The Chopin is actually made from uh, potatoes. Potato vodka, very popular in uh, various Eastern Europe, Eastern European countries, uh, as well as uh, 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 Russia and uh, 
other areas over there. Uh, just a bit of a weird time saying that just now because of when I'm actually making this one. Now, uh, I don't think... So I've been to... Uh, I've been to Poland and Krakow, I went to a vodka bar there and uh, had a significant amount of tastings in there to the point where I, my wife was uh, actually very surprised that I was able to make it home by myself. But I didn't have the potato vodka, I had a lot of other sort of flavoured ones, some were a bit cheesy, but some were actually pretty good. It was my first time that I actually had the opportunity to try bison grass vodka as well. Uh, that's certainly something you should give a shot. Uh, interesting flavours and not bad at all actually. So this is potato vodka. Hmm. And this is actually, where's this one from? Is this actually from Krakow itself? I'm trying to remember. Bear with me one second. No, Krizesk. I don't even know, uh, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that particularly well. But uh, it's very smooth. There's a, there's almost like a, how word this, like, there's like a sourness just in the middle of it there. Probably because, you know, you're, you're using fermented vegetables as part of this. But there's a, a little bit of a sourness. It's very smooth, soft, uh, and really even just drinking it straight, there's no real burn at all. You certainly know it's strong alcohol, but it's not, it's not a burning one. It's not, it's not, uh, it's not grabbing your neck and your throat and your, your stomach and twisting it around. It's actually pretty nice. Hmm. I can go for a few of those anyway, that's for sure. So, we're going we're gonna to do this with this. Alright. Uh, ingredients. Got it here. Measures. Uh, since uh, I'm going to be making two of these, so I'm going to double it up. Uh, it is two ounces of uh, vodka for each one of these. Yeah. Now this cocktail was actually invented back in the 1980s, uh, I think it was uh, in the, the bars that McNally had in New York, uh, was it Prav, Pravsda, there's like a bar name that he used to have in New York and it was a very popular one there at that time. I think it's having a little bit of a resurgence itself just now and uh, why not, let's give it a shot. You know, there's a lot of cocktails out there. All right, we are going to use three quarters of an ounce of our Chambord liqueur for each one. So that overall will be one and a half. That's one. And a half. And then, for our pineapple juice, you know what? I just realised I couldn't even remember how much pineapple juice is it. One and three quarter? No, it's one and a half. I was going to put too much in there. I had to check there. I was getting all thrown off. Pineapple juice. One and a half for each. So that's going to be three ounces of our pineapple juice. So that's one. And the two to make our three. All right, there we go, we've got it. Can't leave that sitting by its lonesome. Hmm. That's gone. That's gone. All right. Well, that's so different now. Potato vodka. All right, ice, chilling it down. Get it in there. On, let's get this one shaken up. Chilled! Alright, off at the top. Couple of nice uh, cocktail glasses, martini glasses, something that this is going to look very good in. Mm -hmm. Nice colour there. Just with a little bit of the aeration in there, it looks cloudy, but it will settle and the colour will brighten up. There we go. You've got a couple of options for garnish on this one. Certainly a wedge of pineapple works. 
But let's do it for an odd two hour chambure. And let's use raspberries. Set there. And a set there. Oh, wow. Nice looking colour. I, I don't know if this is oxidised at all. I'm trying to remember how purple or a a dark red that this should actually be. There's possible there's been a little bit of oxidization there, so it made it made, made, made it a little bit of a darker colour than what it should have been. It still tastes friggin' phenomenal. I know the flavour hasn't gone off. So even if it had oxidized, don't taste it anyway like that. Interested in a shirt like this by the way? Well, if you want a shirt like this, you're gonna have to take a wee trip to uh, the silk uh, silk factory uh, outside Chiang Mai in a uh, in a uh, uh, where the hell am I going? Hmm. So if you're interested in a shirt like this, uh, unfortunately, I don't know if you can order it online and get it delivered here, but, uh, well, not unfortunately, but maybe may fortunate, you're gonna have to take a trip to Thailand and head to Chiang Mai, and there's a silk factory just outside Chiang Mai, uh, and I picked this up there. I did have a nice blue one as well, but I left that in a hotel, would you believe? Anyway, purple, reds, purples, let's go for it. Let's give this one a taste. Cheers. All right, definitely a sweeter one. Can't deny that. Pineapples coming in there. Uh, the vodka really playing a supporting role. I'm gonna say something. I would maybe not go for something like the Chopin on this. I might go for something a little bit with, uh, in all honesty, I'd probably go with something a little bit more bite to it than this. It's kind of getting lost. I feel as though that this, even although, you know, you talk about the quality of ingredients that make a cocktail, the better the booze that's in there, the better the cocktail is actually going to be. But of course, what's the right spirit? What's the right brand that you want to use as well? It's not bad, but I think there's so much, the pineapple juice, I, I don't think it's letting this shine through as well as what it could do. Just a little note, all right? But, Chambure, it's in there, just faintly. Uh, I might tone down the next one, I might tone down the pineapple just, just pineapple juice, just a fraction actually. I think it's overpowering it a little bit too much. This though, it's a fun cocktail, easy to drink, that's for sure, a little bit sweeter, maybe something at the end of a meal. Uh, could probably get through one or two of these. I don't think I could go through, through, uh, through too many more of it, but certainly nice, bright, and uh, not bad at all, all right? So, everybody, crank these ones out and uh, enjoy your uh, French martinis. Mm. Cheers.